Welcome to a new video in my channel and today I'm going to show you something that I did for my outdoor garden railway. This is an input selector that I designed and it got manufactured by PCBWay. So thank you PCBWay for this uh, sponsoring. And if you remember my video that I did back in 2015, um, I created a selector where I can select the input voltage for the track. Um, so the idea was that I have several inputs like these and um, based on which relay is energized then it switches those inputs into the output and back in the day um, I had to find this uh, rotary selector switch that would operate relays um, and uh, because I couldn't find any rotary selector which had a, a good enough amperage rating so I ended up going with the uh, you know the rotary switch just uh, switching relays and I thought you know maybe I can improve on that one and I can just design an electronic uh, version of that and it's basically a decade counter which counts every time it receives a, an input and I just use this very cheap switch which I probably need to replace uh, with a better switch because sometimes it jumps too and every time I push the switch it just um, advances the input so I have an LED, so it shows me status, which one is active. And of course, the uh, individual relay gets pulled and I can see, well, I can switch between inputs. And the reason I'm touching, well, the reason I'm changing this one, because I need one additional input. Back in the day, I was uh, using Merklin Digital and I had some simple Merklin engines. But since last year, I started upgrading some of the engines, some of my new engines to um, Azu Lock Sound XL5, which all supports MFX. And now what I was expecting is I put my Loco on the track and then, you know, it would just register in the mobile station, but it doesn't do that. And it doesn't do that because I'm using an aftermarket booster and that booster was not designed with MFX. So it's not sending data back to the controller. It's only, you know, boosting the signal from the controller to the track. And okay, I thought that I, I still want to use the booster and I'm happy with that booster, it's been working fine. So what I'm going to do is my default input, so my input zero is going to be the um, input from the booster. But then I also have maybe input two I'm going to use as a direct input from the Merklin control box. So if I want to register a new engine, I just select input two, so I get a, uh, a straight path between the control box and a, and a track, so the MFX, MFX communication can work both ways, and the mobile station would be able to register the engine, and I can just uh, switch it back to the default input, which is going to use the booster. So that's the whole idea, and for that I needed one additional input, because I think originally I had uh, four, and now I need five, because I need the booster, the direct input, and I have a DC input and I also have like an external input for third party uh, controllers. And I thought, okay, let's just have one more for redundancy in case I need it uh, in the future. Going back to the whole design, it's, you know, it's fairly simple. As I said, there is a decade counter and the output of the, the decade counter IC is just switched by a simple um, transistor and then I have an LED with a resistor here and a flyback, I think it's called a flyback diode, um, which is going to clamp the reverse voltage when the uh, relay is de-energized. And that's pretty much it. And I need a sm uh, the smoothing uh, circuitry on the input is just a resistor and a capacitor. So that's uh, pretty much it. And on the other side, well, there's nothing really special. Actually, there is one special thing which is here. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing this. Oh, by the way, the reason this is so shiny because I coated the backside with conformal coating. So here, what I have done is I left these traces exposed and I just run through them with soldering iron and um, uh, solder just to thicken the traces even more, just to make sure that they can carry uh, you know, a couple of amps. And these relays, um, as you can see, they have the contacts here and they have, um, you know, double poles. So they are obviously switching both poles 
and these relays are rated so these are 12 amp relays and they are rated for 10 amps so that should be you know plenty enough uh, for me and if I switch the view um, let me just um, um, go back to one of my earlier videos so this is how the whole setup looks like let me just pause maybe uh, yeah so this is the um, that's the Macklin control box and from the control box the power goes into my booster and then from the booster it comes back to this uh, unit which is the, which is the exi existing switching unit so I will be replacing that and um, I also choose the button instead of a rotary switch because um, I'm planning to you know mount the button here instead of the front plate so it's uh, it's easier to disassemble if I want to open it because now there are like a bunch of fires going back and forth and I also modify this so it runs on 12 volts which is uh, this big power supply that I'm using for uh, all the auxiliary stuff like lights and uh, well pretty much lights at the moment and as you can see there is like an old Samsung uh, mobile phone charger and that is only used to provide a 5 volts for this board because it has 5 volt relays so I can get rid of that and just use 12 volts from here so it's going to make this uh, setup a little bit easier and probably a little bit neater as well I still need this uh, power uh, bank sorry uh, what is it wall ward for the um, for the Merklin stuff I'm not sure when I'm going to install it because while well, autumn is coming the weather is getting worse so maybe this is something that just needs to be ready for um, you know next spring but uh, we'll see how it goes and as I said this is done with a PCB way um, so uh, I ordered a PCB from them and uh, because I have this cooperation with them I got this board for free but uh, I also created a PCB project site so if you want the same board you can just order it from me you are going to find all the links in the video description and uh, there is no project page obviously there is no github because there's no code you just solder everything together and i don't have exact bombs because i've purchased most of the stuff in a local electronics store but i've tried including everything here so you can you know search for the exact type of relays the ICs and some of the I mean you know most of the diodes and the resistors are like you know basic resistors nothing special about them probably the only thing which is special is the relay but that's the exact marking on the relay I'm pretty sure that you can find them on Aliexpress um, one thing to note is uh, these resistors here let me change the view sorry this one so these resistors here the uh, in this row they are the resistors for the LED so I again happen to use some um, high power uh, white LEDs and I used a 5k resistor for those but you may need to readjust this value uh, based on you know what sort of uh, LEDs that you use so you might need a smaller or higher value resistor also keep in mind that this chip can work from I believe like nine, 5 to 10, 12 volts so you can basically build the same one with different voltages so if you happen to find different relays with the same footprint but 5 volts then um, then again the whole setup is going to work from 5 volts as well uh, pro you may be you may need to you know change the resistor values but anyway everything is here so you can download the schematics that I designed in uh, EZD, EDA and since I was talking about this exposed copper it is really easy to do in EZDA because you design your layout and then you select the trace and there is a button here which says exposed copper and it works fine so I got these board as sorry I got these boards uh, where the copper was exposed actually let me show you one of the I mean I, I have five boards so let me show you one that is not populated so the front side is like this it's not you know very exciting and on the back you can see that the whole those fat traces on the top are all exposed and I'm using I think it's 5.8 millimeter pitch screw terminals uh, for for all the terminals so they can fit um, you know thicker wires and I also got some stickers from PCBWay and it looks like that they are already seven years old so um, that's good for them
and hopefully there will be a lot more projects in the future that I can do with PCBWay. But I think that would be all for today. As usual, if you are interested in the project, I'm going to leave all the links down in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.